Okay. I hope the recording is okay. Okay, never mind. All right. So today we do the normal chanting, Namo Tassa. Okay. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. Okay. Uh, I, Doris, you also do some recording. Hopefully, in case my computer got problem, you know, you, you try to record also at your site. Is it okay or not? All right. Do you know where is the record button? <laughs> okay, never mind. If you cannot, cannot, doesn't matter. All right. Today, I thought of we are doing it in a more informal way because since we are talking about a topic that most of you are uh, very familiar, all right? So most of you, of course, when you come to Buddhism, the first truth that you, you will hear about the Four Noble Truth. I'm sure most of you will hear it. So before we go to the Visimaga, they are all the texts. Yesterday, you learned many texts already. So today, we kind of like go informally, right? So you know that there are Four Noble Truths. Now, I will ask you some questions. It's good for you all to think of it. First, why do you call it Noble? Arya Sacha, okay? Four Noble Truth in Pali called Arya Sacha. A-R-I-Y-A, Arya Sacha, S-A-C-C-A, uh, -A -A, okay? So you all can just take it informally. So you all can open your video. We make it like chit chat today, a Dharma discussion. So everybody can turn on your video, yeah. Okay, so, so start with Mingxi. So can you tell us why do you think it's called Arya Sacha? No, no. Ah, you don't know. <laughs> never, never, really give it, never really give it a thought. Lah, huh? Why is it called noble? Lah? Hmm. Okay. So you think that, let's say if I say four truths and four noble truths, do you think there's a difference between four truths and four noble truths? If we say four truths, then maybe we say four truths about something. Four truths about a tree. Ah, then four truths, huh? Ah, okay. Maybe four noble truth is a universal truth. Universal maybe, truth. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure. Just give it a just just strike me only. If four truth, it may be truth about something. Okay. All right. So any answer from others other I call you all students since we all are learning the Dhamma. Okay, any other student you want to just share your experience or whatever you learned so far? For any Dhamma talk here, why we call it Four Noble Truth? Okay, everybody, you can turn on the video. We make it as Dhamma discussion today, all right? Turn on the video. So let's join the chit chat, all right? Okay, how about Sumita? You've been in a Buddhist center for long, so long, okay. yeah. I try. Mm. Arya, mm. when you call somebody an Arya, that means this person has attained a higher knowledge. So, mm. uh, if Arya Satcha is a higher, higher one, la, not like ordinary, uh, mm. so that means this truth, uh, Arya Satcha is the noble, is noble, that means it's a higher, that means it's ultimate, la. we can put it, it's not conventional. So first, oh. you're talking about Arya refer to somebody with higher level. Yes, attain, oh, high, high, attain, okay. Higher and then knowledge. the truth, the second you thought the truth is to do with some higher truth. So, Something uh, like that? Higher truth in a way, uh, ultimate truth. La, that ultimate is truth, not right? conventional. No not conventional, conventional truth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, she got some parts of the answer quite right. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Noble other two in noble. <laughs> but the course say what noble other path are in noble. Oh, what did he say? Noble other two paths were in noble. Why is the other two paths? Okay. All right. So some more others, uh, all right. So basically you think about that. All right, like now we are on the discussion. So when we say the four noble truths, let's say we drop the word noble, we say four truths. We impact the way we understand the Dharma. There's one first question here. So we say four truth and four noble truth. What's the difference between here? All right. 
So do the Buddha, did the Buddha preach the Four Noble Truths? Or did the Buddha preach the Four Truths? So the, the statement, which one is much more impactful? All right, there's one thing we specific. should know. Specific, specific and impactful also, yeah. Yes. Okay, and then, all right, so, okay, now we look at the this Four Noble Truths. Think about it, who preached the Four Noble Truths? Who preached it? Sama Sambuddha. Gautama yeah, okay, Sama, Buddha. yeah, Sama, Sama Buddha, all right. So Sama Sambuddha, he preached the truth. So he preached the truth to who? That's the next question. You know, when we, now I teach all the, 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 the children here uh, about age 14, 15, 16. So we are, we are talking about, uh, you must be subject, you know, in, in SB or subject, but object, right? So the subject is Sama Sambuddha. Then who is the object here? Subject, verb, object. So, Sama Sambuddha teaches, okay, four noble truth. Yeah. That, that one thing that we call it direct object. But you also question, question he teach the truth to who? Who did he teach? This is the next question. To all you know, those he, who follow the path. Okay, like who are those? Ordinary, ordinary who? Pujana also still follow the four noble truth. Ma. That means to yeah, okay. everyone. To everybody, uh, whirling and also non-whirling, all right? Yes. Okay, that, that's one thing, okay? So, that's one answer. So, all right. So, then the next question is, now we know the Buddha, Sama Samoda, preached the Four Noble Truth to whirlings and Arahan, okay? And what kind of things that he preached? Now, when we learn the Dhamma, we, we, does, we don't just go and just, of course, we learn we, we learn from our teacher, we just remember it at this, this. But sometimes we need to go a little bit deeper and think about that. So, because sometimes when you explain it to somebody who are non Buddhist, have you tried to es explain it to non Buddhists? No. <laughs> so, when you try to explain, es uh, explain it to non Buddhists who didn't even know who is the Buddha, who didn't even know what is the Four Noble Truth, how will you say it? I, I was uh, having a, a good experience actually last last time last year when after I finished my Dharma Dutta in Malaysia so I fly to the Yangon actually in, in Myanmar there's a lot of Christianity uh, a lot of Christian people so the, the one seat next to me happened to be a Christian lady oh she was very strong in her <laughs> publication also <laughs> and then she started to teach me she said oh she, she should wear problem and then the, she believed the god and how the god said to her and then i see oh i say oh how can they just preach the religion without feeling so embarrassed you know i think most buddhists if you ask you to preach it ask you to preach to the non-buddhists of course we don't say about muslim if you ask you to preach to somebody who are not into buddhist you will feel very embarrassed uh, not not willing to say or feel very difficult for you to say. Then I was thinking, why is it we don't have that kind of skill to preach it or to share it? What's the main problem? Is it maybe because we don't understand we don't understand it uh, in a simple way? Right? Okay. So okay, now we know Sama Samuda is the Buddha, all right? The Buddha preaches the four noble truth. Okay, now preachers means what kind of, in the Four Noble Truths, we say, what is the meaning of this noble? So we have to think about it. So just now Sumita say noble is what? Higher, uh, what? Higher truth, something like that. Ultimate truth, right? Okay. And then the person who preach is also noble, all right? So who preach the truth? is the Buddha. So Buddha is a noble person. So actually in the Tipitaka, Especially when we read the commentary, there's a lot of answer. The Buddha is, he was a noble one. So that's why his truth, the four truth is called the noble truth. That's one reason. And the truth itself is the high one, especially talk about Nibbana. That's why the truth itself is very noble itself. And the object, the Buddha preached to somebody who can, because of this truth, he become an Arahant. Okay, so that's also the object of recipient. It, the recipient of the truth, he can become the noble person. So there are a few ways we can see. So actually, it's quite interesting if you look at the, this four noble truth. Can you follow so far? Okay, what is the first one? Why is it called noble? 
Somebody because says? the preacher is noble, the subject right. is yes. noble, the, the recipient is noble. is noble. The recipient become noble, all right? And then, okay, the subject is noble, the recipient will become noble. And the object, the preaching object, the, the object of what Buddha preached is also noble, noble. by itself. Okay, so you can say subject noble, object also noble. Indirect object means that the recipient also noble. Okay, and when somebody who understands it, they become noble by that, they become arahan. So that's why we call four noble truths. Uh, I will share the text later. So we just come to just listen to Dhamma like this and think about it. And if you can think like this, so when as next time you explain to somebody who are not Buddhist or who doesn't know about Dhamma, maybe it's easier for you to ask, say, what is the core main uh, in essential part of the Buddha teaching? Okay, Compared to Hinduism and Buddhism, have you done this kind of comparative study? What's the difference? Never. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Hinduism believe in the Brahma God, you know, the Brahma God. So when they pass away, what will happen to them? They were re unite, unite. unite with the God. Yeah. So it's the same with Christianity, right? So they come from God and then after they pass away and then they go there and await for the God to what receive them and forgive them. So this is why I would say the Christian lady, the way she preached very good. No? She said, Oh, we just believe in a God and then the God accept our sin and then our sin wash away. We don't need to do much and then we can go to heaven immediately. <laughs> Some very fair, very nice idea. <laughs> don't need to make the effort, no need to like practice meditation, whatever. You just believe the God and just pass away and then can go to heaven immediately. So I was thinking, wow, she, she can really preach it because she believe. You know, she believe. That's why because yeah, of she believe. He will say that the God will yeah. forgive their sins, not them, not themselves. La. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Don't need to make the effort. The God only <laughs> the, everything depends on the God. Yeah, so they don't even need to make the effort like like Buddhism, you know, you all we as a Buddhist are so so suffering. Uh. <laughs> we had to work very hard in meditation. We we come to this four noble truths, we talk about what? Suffering. <laughs> right. So you think about it. First noble truth is what? Suffering. Is suffering. Right. Second noble truth. Origin of suffering. Origin. The cause of suffering. The cause of suffering. Okay. Then the fourth noble truth is the practice leading to cessation, cessation of, suffering. of suffering. Then the third Solid. noble truth is a end of suffering. <laughs> so we talk noble. about four noble truths. We are talking about what? Dukkha. Dukkha and Dukkha and Dukkha and Dukkha. First one is Dukkha Satya. Second one is cause of suffering. Samudaya Satya. Then Nibbana is cessation of suffering, Niroda Satya. And then the last one is the Patipata, okay, the path leading to cessation of suffering. So if we are going to preach to people about suffering, so what do you think? Do they like to hear about suffering? They run away, right? <laughs> they run away, right? Yeah. Unless they personally they personally believe in suffering, you know. But how many people in the world want to listen to suffering? Even if they have suffering in their life, they just want to escape from the suffering. That's why the if you say the Western world, from very young, they indulge in what? Sex, you know, alcohol, drinking, why? Because they, they don't want to face the suffering. They just want to escape from it. But nowadays, of course, now with the more exposure to Buddhism, a lot of young people are also interested to learn Buddhism. That's why a lot of Western country, those travelers, as young as 15 years old, they start to go to Asia. Because in my center last time, we have very young German, German lady. She's a, uh, her parents from Vietnam. But her, she actually, from young, she lived in Germany. Their system is very different. From age of 15, they start to travel around the world. The parents really allow them and the, their education system really forced them to go and see the world. And their culture is different. Once they go to high school, whatever, they leave their home forever. They don't stay with parents anymore. So they are very independent. 
So like so some like 17 years old, 16 years old, they come to my center also from New Zealand. Then those young people, they will start to, they, they are very open-minded. They want to learn about religion. Yeah, for those we call it, they have sangen. Sangen means they have a wholesome marriage in the past life. So they can come to learn the Dhamma. But when they come to do, learn the Dhamma and you start to tell them, okay, four noble truth. First truth, suffering. Second truth, also about suffering. Third one, also about suffering. Finally, you also must practice leading to cessation of suffering and suffering, suffering. <laughs> so, so, so what happened? So they say, okay, lah, don't want to hear. <laughs> so I always remember my conversation with the Christian lady who sat next to me in the airplane from KL to Yangon. I said, oh, how come she just preach, preach her, her, her region in a very natural way? She had full conviction that the God received her, receive her what all the suffering and all the sins. They just need to believe in a God and they go to heaven straight forward. I was thinking, ha, ah, then we are Buddhists uh, must see the suffering, practice the suffering, and then you meditate, you also see suffering. And finally, you go to teacher when during the meditation time, you also talk about suffering. The teacher also encourage you to see suffering. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Okay, but why do we need to talk about Four Noble Truth? For those who, that's why the Buddha say, you remember they say the lotus simile, there are some born under the water, there are some come out a little bit on the surface of water, there are some come out from the water free from mud. So in this world, there will be some people with many defilements, they do not understand Dhamma. There will be some with little defilement or some with some defilement. For those with little defilement, they will be able to understand the Dhamma. Okay. So that's why sometimes we need to preach the Dhamma as it is not change it to make talk, to change it to the Buddhism talk about happiness. It's talk about cause of happiness, like Ajahn Brahm said, yes, we can preach in this way. Happiness, cause of happiness, uh, the path leading to happiness. We can talk about happiness, right? Okay. It's also another way to preach. It depends on how we preach. By the core essential Buddhism still talk about four noble truths. Arya Satya, Dukkha Satya, Samudaya Satya, Niroda Satya. And then the last one is a Dukkha Patipata, Gamini. Or the path leading to cessation of suffering. Okay. Now you on, on or now today we are more on the uh, discussion, all right? So then about now, when Buddha talk about four noble truths, he also talk about the middle path. Okay, Majima Patipata. And then the there are two, no, we don't say the path, right? We can say there are two extremes. One extreme is enjoyment too much, okay, self-indulgent. Another one is the self-modification. This one we can see from the personal, from the life of the Buddha. Before that, he lived in a palace. Okay, so before we talk about Dukkha, let's talk about the life of the Prince Siddhartha. Now, it's a question for you all. You heard about he, his life is so good that he had three palaces. Do you know why there need to be three palaces? Anybody? According, according to the season. Okay. Why need to be according to season? That's a question. Comfort, full comfort, no need to suffer any heat. Ah, right, okay. Summer, then go to the summer house so that there's everything there, all her mm. comfortable. Okay. No comfortable. suffering at all. Yeah, all right. So during the summer, he go to a place. You know, the summer palace is like, like one. Uh. It's one thing because uh, you all stay in Malaysia. Most of the time, you are staying in the either fan, fully fan or fully aircon. You don't have much bodily suffering. Yeah, maybe you have some, but not as much here. Here, summer can be as hot as 42 or 45, you know, in here. And without aircon, <laughs> without aircon, without fan. Because summertime, everybody use the A3, so A3 also now, now due to the fighting here, so no electricity, no fan, no air corn. You know, it's very, very hot. So the, the only place so hot that I do have to lie down on the floor, ceramic floor. You know why? That's mm -hmm. the coolest part. Coolest part. Because the, the wall is absorbed. You know how hot it can be. The daytime, the, the heat 
the heat uh, absorbed into the wall, you know. And then nighttime, the heat from the wall start to give back. So the heat actually is actually can quite quite terrible, you know. So sometimes I can take bath as much as six times, still very hot. So imagine Prince Siddhartha, he stay in the palace. So what kind of palace suitable for summer palace? If you read the story, especially Chronicle of the Buddha, it's very interesting. The palace is have water food, water pool in it. So it's like dropping the water all the time, you know. So there are fountain of water everywhere. So you know when the, there's water, the spark, it, it gives the I got vapors, so it absorbs the heat. So it's very cool, even in summertime, you know. So in the winter, what kind of place you go? It's a, it's a, the, because the winter, the wind is very strong. So the window will be very small and everything is fully carpeted, you know. So it absorbs the heat. So the floor is carpeted, the walls carpeted. So it's very warm, especially at night. Sometimes night here, here it's not so cold, but if you go for India, Northern India, you feel the freeze. That's why the Buddha allowed that triple rock for the monks, you know, that's the reason. And then during the, the uh, what, the uh, raining season, raining season is very wet, you know, so the, the summer have another, the palace will have another design. So Prince Siddhartha, his life is so comfortable, he did not see any suffering. Wherever you go, there will be an umbrella, there will be people take care of him. So this is why his life is so luxurious. He didn't have any suffering, you know, that's one. So after that, when he go for six years and then he, he encountered all sorts of suffering, he tortured himself. You all read the story where he became so uh, skeleton and uh, go for fasting and without the food, almost die. Until the day was start to discuss that, oh, he might die or he might not die. Some say he will die already. Some they say he will not die because he has not become the Buddha yet. You know, he fainted and the body, skin all become so ugly, black color. So that's why from the Buddha personal experience, he say about two extreme ways, all right? One is a very sensual, for sensual desire. Another one is a full of extreme practice. That's why the Buddha discovered the middle way that is not against this, against uh, these two extreme and then for the middle path. And then from there, he gained the first jhana. He remember his uh, when he was uh, under the what tree and then when he was a very young baby, tree. yeah, Rose yeah apple, apple tree. tree, apple tree, yeah. Then he, after that he gained the jhana and then after that he based on his meditative experience he get comfortably, then he start to eat the food. So at that time, what happened? He five comp uh, companions left him. There's few reasons why they leave him because first thing they have wrong belief that he give out the practice, and second thing to be a Buddha he need to stay alone. You need to have the time to stay alone to practice, okay. So from there he start to discover about the, this four noble truths, and he start to talk about suffering. All right, okay. Now you all understand the meaning of noble and understand the. The, this four truth. Okay, now we come to this word truth. What kind of truth do you think it is? Satya. All right, we have the ten parami. We also have the satya. So, what kind of truth it can be? Like, uh, is it on the ultimate truth only, or what else? Anybody? What kind of truth do you think it can be? Right? What kind of truth? Birth and suffering. Birth and suffering. Who can understand and practice uh, will be Arya, will become Arya. So that's this the half. Okay, so they become Arya. So it's a truth. So what kind of truth? I think it's the ultimate truth because if you are an animal, it's also you also go through suffering. If you are rich, you also go through suffering. If you are poor, you also go through suffering. Okay, ultimate truth. All right. Okay, so the first noble truth we are talking about. Everything in brief is five aggregates, right? Like 
So yes. what kind of five aggregates? So five aggregates we can consider as ultimate truth. But still the Buddha before talk about five aggregates, he start, start to talk about something that people can understand. What, what is it? Birth, aging, sickness, huh? separation from loved one, association with the disliked one, okay? uh, lamentation, sorrow, grief, and so on. I think there's a 11 truth, 11 suffering there. Okay, so when the Buddha talk about that, so most people can accept it, right? Aging, everybody can accept it, all right? Aging, sickness, uh, sorrow, lamentation, grief, physical body pain, association with the people you don't like or things that you don't like, and then, uh, and then you separate from the things or the person you like we also can understand and accept it. But only one thing I think difficult for people to understand it, birth is suffering. Okay. Do you feel your birth is suffering? <laughs> that's, a, that's a difficult thing. Do you think your birth, your birth is suffering by itself? Yes, for the mother as well as you. You're struggling to come up from a narrow passage. Yeah, but we don't know Very about suffering. that. Yeah. But the problem is we don't know about that, right? The mother might know, but we don't know about that. All right? So when we say the birth is suffering, is actually not a lot of people will accept it. Because the Buddha say wherever we go, when, let's say we are born as a uh, ants or frogs or as a bird, we enjoy our life. The craving is always there from the moment of rebirth. Okay. So that's why we enjoy the birth, even though you might feel very suffering, but you still enjoy your human life. That's why the birth is suffering, it's not easy to accept by most people. And now you are in the this process of birth. Okay. But the why the Buddha say birth is suffering? Because due to birth, that's the first cause, you will have aging sickness and so on. Okay. And who Whoever, who is the person that will see birth as suffering? Not a lot of people will see. It's very difficult to understand. That's why we call it four noble truth. Because the truth is, is not the normal truth. It's a very high truth. So far, I've been asking around. So far, only I, I heard it's only some of the, those noble person who don't want to come back into the world. They don't want another birth. Or those who suffer from cancer. You know, when they suffer from cancer or suffer from diabetes, they need to go for kidney treatment. They will see birth is a suffering because they see to maintain this body is a big job. Okay. Now you all are healthy. Most of you are healthy. Maybe you have some back pain or kidney, uh, once in a while, some eye problem and so on. But you don't have, they can't, we call it a dislike for this life, or you feel that you, you want to, you don't wish there's another life in the future, right? Because the craving is always there. So sometimes I only, so far I heard it's only one because she has diabetes problem for many years and then she suffered a lot, two years, bad ridden before she passed away. So for her, she decided she didn't want to come back again. No rebirth for her. She totally gave out the attachment for craving. Okay? So if somebody can be like this, it's very easy for them to practice meditation because totally cut out a lot of craving already. Okay. All right. So we talk about the four noble truths and then this is the first noble truth. In brief, we say it's five aggregates. Right? All right. Now, if you want to practice meditation, you have to look at the suffering aspect, but you also need to go for five aggregates. That's why to know more about five aggregates, the knowledge of Abhidhamma will help a lot. Sometimes you want to meditate on five, uh, five aggregates, but if you don't know about how, what is actually the five aggregates, it's difficult for you to practice. That's why when you know more about Abhidhamma, you know how to see the five aggregates. Right. Okay. Now I think enough. So let me share the screen. So. All right. So it's from the this text.
the truth. Uh, now we are on the chapter of Panya, right? Understanding. Four Noble Truth, this one, okay? So very easy. So Noble Truth of Suffering, Origin of Suffering, Cessation of Suffering, the way leading to the cessation of suffering. So Four Truth, Arya, Satya. So just now I already mentioned the few reasons why it's called Arya. Because the subject is the Buddha. Okay. So, or the Samasam Buddha. So, he preached the Four Noble Truth. Okay. And then the object is the Noble Truth. So, who is the most noble one? Object is of the not truth, and then the recipient is a uh, is also will will become a noble one. Noble one means become an arahan. Okay, so there are few reason here, and then the truth is higher. Okay, higher truth or ultimate truth is a normal truth. It's not more higher than noble one. All right. Then uh the normal uh normal normal truth. Okay, now we go for this one. Now we still have to understand the meaning of suffering, all right? Okay, there are many here. Okay, now we the Pali word is dukkha. So it's good to read about this. Uh, okay, Doris Chi, can you read out? Yes. Number 16, uh, Sayaji. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh. As to derivation, number three, division by character, etc. Here, however, firstly, as to der derivation of the word dukkha, suffering, the word do, bad, is met with in the sense of vile, kuchita, for they call a vile child a ku, a du puta bad child. The word come, nurse, however, is met with in the sense of empty, tucha, for they call empty space, come. And the first truth is vile because it is the haunt of many dangers. And it is empty because it is devoid of the lastingness beauty, pleasure, and self-conceived by rash people. So it is called Dukang, badness, equals to suffering, pain, because of vileness and emptiness. Okay, thank you. So that's a... Thank you. Thank you. That's an exact definition for the word Dukkha. Right? So that's why when we read the commentary, we get some extra knowledge. Anyway, so let me make it bigger. So it has two meanings. The main thing is one is called wow, what, wowness. How do you pronounce it? Okay. Bad, in a sense of bad, like du puta, bad char. So another one is from the word dukkha. Okay, so when we say the Bali word dukkha, coming from the word du plus k h a m. All right. So do is bad. So this car means coming from the meaning of empty, right? When you say empty, means it devoid of lastingness, beauty, pleasure, and self. So this means that instead of uh, uh, like nicha sukha dukkha, so it's uh, it is actually anicha dukkha anatta. Right, so it means empty of nicha in Bali. Nicha suka, nicha tuka, uh, what? Yeah, nicha suka atta. Okay, so it's actually anicha duka anatta. 
So that's the meaning of Dukkha. Is is bad, okay? Do is bad, okay? Or oh, this word, wow, wow, how to pronounce it? Wellness, wellness or wellness, okay? Emptiness. So that's the first meaning. And then the second one is called this uh, word, Dukkha Satya. Second one is a uh, Samudaya Satya. Okay. The one is Niroda Satya. Okay. The one is a uh, Patipata Kamini. Okay. Yeah. We copy the Bali words later. Okay. Now, Samudaya Satya, origin of suffering. Okay. Now, it's interesting if you are very interested to learn the Bali because you can see the actual definition and compound word. Okay, so Samudaya from the word Sam, connection. As in the word Samagama, coming together. Sameta, gone together. The U means rising. So you got Sam and U. Like the word upana. Aya denotes the reason. Okay. So it's a, some grammatical understanding. Some come together, u arising out, and then with the aya. Aya is reason here. So it's a this second truth is the reason for the arising or suffering when combined with the remaining conditions. Next one in Niroda. Ni is absent. So Roda means prison. So the third truth is void of all destinies by rebirth. And there is cons no constraint of suffering here. Reckoned as a prison. So rounds of rebirth is say as prison. So this means that Ni and Roda. Roda means prison. Means that no, uh, no prison. Prison here is a rounds of rebirth. So anyway, Ni Roda. Dukkha Niroda is a cessation of suffering. Okay, next one. The fourth one is this one. Niroda Gamini Patipata. So the fourth truth goes, Patipata is the path. Gamini is a leading. Niroda is a cessation. So the whole body is Dukkha Niroda Gamini Patipata. The way leading to the cessation of suffering. So it's good to learn some <laughs> the Pali also. Okay. Okay, so Dukkha Niroda Gamini Pati There's a T here. Pati Pati Pada. Okay. Dukkha suffering, Niroda is cessation. Gamini, from the word Gachati, gam, uh, gam suffix, uh, leading. Pati Pada is the way or path. So, noble truth of the way, or we can use the word the path leading to the cessation of suffering. So, this is the noble eight fourth path okay so if you look at here if we are talking about noble so this is also another one you the subject is the buddha the object is the noble truths recipient will become a noble one and then the path is you can call it as a noble eight fourth path so there's a few reasons why we call it as an aria okay so we can Take it, there are four reasons why we call it Arya as a means that no noble one. Okay. Uh now the reason is given here. Okay, so uh it's good to read. Uh, uh let's see who wants to read. Uh brother Lee, you can read, yeah. 20, 21, and 22. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, 20, right? Yeah, 20. They are called noble truth because the noble ones, the Buddha, etc., penetrate them according as it is said, because they are these four noble truths. What for? 
this because of the four noble truth. The noble ones penetrate them, therefore they call the noble truth. Besides the noble truth are the noble one truths, according as it is said, because in the world with its deities, its maras and its brahmas, in this generation with its uh, ascetics and brahmans, with its prince and men, the perfect one is the noble one. That is why they are called noble truth. Or alternatively, they are called noble truth because of the nobleness implied by their discovery, according as it is said, because it is only to the correct discovery of this noble truth, four noble truths, that the perfect one is called accomplished, fully enlightened. Beside the noble truths are the truths that are noble. To be noble is to be not unreal. The meaning is not deceptive, according as it is said, because these four noble truths are the real, not unreal, not otherwise. That is why they are called noble truths. Okay, thank you. All right, so there are other reasons here. So the Buddha penetrate them. So that's why they are called four noble truths. So beside the Buddha, the subject, yeah. He beside he preach it, he also he the Buddha preach it. Preaches the four noble truths. The Buddha also penetrates the four noble truths. Okay. And then there's another reason mentioned here. Uh, the truth they are noble because they are not unreal. The meaning is not deceptive. Okay. So the truth is not unreal. Not unreal means it's a real thing. Yeah. Okay. So this paragraph 20, 21, 22 is actually try to explain the reason about Arya. Okay. Noble truth. Another one. Because the nobleness implied by their discovery. Okay. Because this means that when somebody discover it, implied by their discovery. Okay, means that when they discover it, so either they become noble or because the truth is noble by itself. I have to think about that. All right. Anyway. Okay, let's go for this one. This one, uh, when you learn Abhidhamma, everything will have four way, characteristic, function, manifestation. Okay, so here it mentioned only one, two, three. So then also, origin or truth also characteristic, function, manifestation. Okay, twenty three. So let's read. Uh, okay, Puelu, yeah, you can read this one. Three, yeah. Okay. How as to division by character, etc. The truth of suffering has the characteristic of afflicting. Its function is to burn. It is manifested as occurrence, as the cause of an existence. The truth of origin has the characteristic of producing. Its function is to prevent interruption. It is manifested as impediment. The truth of cessation has the characteristic of peace. Its function is not to die. It is manifested as the signless. The truth of the path has the characteristic of an outlet. Its function is to abandon defilements. It is manifested as emergence. They have, moreover, the respective characteristics of occurrence, making occur, non-occurrence, and making not occur. And likewise, the characteristics of uh, the formed, craving the unformed and seeing. This is how the exposition should be understood here as to characteristic, etc. Okay, thank you. So this means that we can see in each of the four, we can see in three ways, according to characteristic, function. Okay, yeah. And then the last one is the Manifestation. So in Abhidhamma, normally we see in four ways here is only mentioned three. Okay. So, so, so I just copy it later, we'll do formatting. So that means that the first one will be on characteristic, second one will be function, third one will be manifestation.
So the truth of origin also same way, characteristic, function, and manifestation. So I think this is the very clear already, if we can see in this way. But of course, I don't think we need to meditate to see all this. But it's good for understanding only. Okay. So also the path. So this is the four, four truth. Every time you put the tree for them, so suffering and then the truth for origin, cessation, and then the path. So, so actually, if we do the formatting like this, it's easier for us to see. Truth of suffering, everything. Function is to burn. This means that when somebody has suffering, they are feel like in burn their mind or mental mental is in suffering so it's like burning so it manifests as occurrence in this samsara okay. origin means that the craving all right okay now before we go deeper so let's go to this one so now you know the truth of suffering means the five agree right okay now what is the origin of suffering I think everybody know about this. What's the answer? Raving. Tanha. Raving, okay. Tanna. Raving. So in Panna, I call Tanna. How, how many kinds of Tanna? Three yeah. kinds, right? Three. Kama Tanna, Bawa Tanna, Vibawa Tanna. Okay, now, cessation of suffering is Nibbana, okay? Mm. Now, okay, before we go deeper, let's say Nibbana actually coming from the word Ni, Vana. Okay. Nivana. Should be long A, right? Nivana. So ni is no. Vana is also another form of craving. So no craving means nibana. Should be long A. And then this one is the noble eight four path. So this you can see this in meditation. You also can see this in meditation. This one you need to practice. And finally, somebody will get this, the Nibbana. Okay, so five aggregates, craving, and then a four path. So you can see this. Okay. Now, now the word truth. Now, it, actually this book is very interesting. You start to Talk about what kind of people say truth, what kind of truth it is. All right? So it's good to read also to learn more. All right. Uh, next person. Uh okay, Sumita, you can read this one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how as to tracing. I have difficulty to read that. Eh? Uh Saji. I mean, is it too small? Book. Okay, okay, yeah, you get it, yeah. Okay. Uh, how as to tracing out the meaning, this word truth structure is met with in various meanings. In such passages as let him speak truth and not be angry, Dhammapada, verse 2 to 4. It is verbal truth. In such passages as ascetics and Brahmans base themselves on truth, it is it is the truth of abstinence from lying in such passages as why do they declare diverse truths, the clever talkers that hold forth. It is truth as views, and in such passages as truth is one, there is no second. It is as truth in the ultimate sense, both, both Nibbana and the path. In such passages as of the four truths, how many are profitable? It is noble truth. And here too, it is proper as noble truth. Okay, thank you. So even like the word satya, truth. So here according to various meaning. Some they say the first meaning is verbal truth. Okay, let him speak the truth. So it's a verbal truth. 
So when you say uh, uh, aesthetic and they base themselves on truth, so this means that they are not telling lies. So why they decree the truth? So it's talking about their own view. So when we say truth is one, so it's a truth in ultimate sense in Nibbana and Path. When we talk about in the passage like Bhati Sambhida, Four Noble Truth, how many are profitable? Means a uh, kusala. Okay, so this is a noble truth. So this means that we need to know the meaning of truth. Right? That's why the just now we are beside noble Arya Satya. Besides the word dukkha, so we have to know what is aria, we have to know about dukkha. When we also need to understand the meaning of truth, right? The meaning of truth, satya. So just now you say, like, just now, like, you got feel like verbal truth or view and abstinence, yeah. And but the ultimate one with ultimate sense. Means I think this one coming from the word paramata sacha, paramata dhamma, right? So only this one is the truth according to just now what I said. This view means that a uh, viewpoint or their own idea about something. Sometimes we can use the word idea, you know. So certain people have a certain idea about certain things. Like this practice is good, that practice is not good. Okay, so there's meaning of truth regarding to this one. Okay, now it's very interesting. Why is it only four noble truth? Okay, so have you ever asked your question, ask yourself this question, why is it like we have 10 parami? Okay, we have 10 parami. Maybe we, instead of 10 parami, we say, why is it not 12 parami? Okay, and when we say, they say four noble truths. Why is it we don't have six noble truths or eight noble truths? Why is it only four? Okay, so there are 27. Can okay, somebody please read? So, uh, Chai Hun, can you read? Chai Hun, Chai Hun, yes. Yeah, uh, 27. Seven, right? yes. As to neither less nor more, but why are exactly four noble truths stated neither less nor more? Because no other exists and because none can be eliminated. For there is none extra to them, nor can any one of them be eliminated according as it is said, because that an ascetic of Brahman here should come and say, this is not the truth of suffering. The truth of suffering is another. I shall set aside this truth of suffering and make known another truth of suffering. That is not possible, and so on. And according as it is said, because that any ascetic of Brahman should say thus, this is not the first noble truth of suffering that is taught by the ascetic Gautama, rejecting, rejecting this first noble truth of suffering I shall make known another first noble truth of suffering that is not possible, and so on. Okay, uh, okay, so yes, thank you. So, somebody read the. Uh, how about Chong Pak Lan? Are you able to read 28? 28. Okay. Uh, okay, furthermore, when announcing occurrence, that is the process of existence. The Blessed One announced it, announced it with a cause, and he announced non-occurrence as having a means there too. So, so they are stated as four at the most as occurrence and non-occurrence and the cause of each. Likewise, they are stated as, as four since they have to be respectively fully understood, abandoned, realized, and developed. And also since they are the basis for craving, craving the cessation of craving and the means to the cessation of craving. And also since they are the reliance dependent upon the delight in the reliance removal of the reliance and the means to the removal of the reliance 
This is how the exposition should be understood here as to neither less nor more. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, just now brother call us about this question. SV should be the Samyutta, all right? Samyutta, one of the texts here. Okay, I think this text is very interesting, all right? Now, previously, the question is, why is it not five or seven or nine, only four noble truth? Why is it exactly four noble truth? So there's answer because if somebody other accepted, they will say, uh, this is not the noble truth, there's noble truth or another. So the Buddha say, you cannot say it's only four noble truth. Okay. And then the reason given on 20 actually is very important for us to know. I, I'm not so sure how many of you heard this before. So I'll, I would like to make it as a chart. Okay. So, okay. Now, just now we already know this one. So let me copy this. So we can see this. Okay, so we can make a table. So I'm going to make a few tables like this. It's interesting to see. Okay, you have the phone number truth here. So, so we are going to make it. So because just now I, I, I think the paragraph gives a lot of extra points. So yes. Because I can prepare the text in advance, but I think it's better we do it together. All right. Now let me put a uh, things on the top. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now you can see the way it is. He announced it with the cause and non-occurrence of it. Okay. So what's the meaning of a cause and non-occurrence? So it's actually trying to say in terms of cause and effect. All right. I think most of you know that. Because everything, the Dhamma, you can mention as a cause, a pair of cause and effect. Okay, so in terms of cause and effect, okay, so which one is the cause, which one is effect? So this is the cause, and this is the effect, or we call it like just now you're trying to say uh, what non occurrence, all right, non occurrence as a mean to that. So this is cause and effect. So then this is the cause. And this effect. So that's why it only need to have only four. It cannot be more than that. So it must be two pair here. This one pair and this another pair. So if you calculate this, there's only four. You cannot have five. You cannot have six because you, there must be suffering. And the suffering is linked with the origin of suffering. So there's a cause effect. And then the path leading to Nibbana. So there's cause effect. Okay. So that's one way we can see from the, this text about occurrence and non-occurrence. And also in terms of practice, the, there will be something you need to understood, you need to abandon, you need to realize, and you need to develop. Okay, so you can put this under practice. So when you practice meditation, you also need to realize, okay? You need to abandon the craving. So that's how when you practice meditation, you can see the four noble truth. So you need to... Also, oh, sorry. This one is understand. Okay, you need to understand it. You need to abandon it. You need to realize the nibbana, and then you need to develop it. Yeah. Okay. So in meditation, please try to do this. When you try to do this, yeah, try to see the cause and effect also. And then we can see another way. Besides talking about suffering and suffering and suffering and suffering, so we can talk about basis of craving, craving, cessation of craving, the means to cessation of craving. So this is actually much meaningful. If you are going to kind of like share the Dhamma, no need to talk about suffering, you can talk about basis of craving.
craving, cessation of craving. The last one is the method, the means leading to craving. So that's why when we preach the Four Noble Truth, or when you want to share with your friend or whatever, you can instead of just talk about suffering, 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 you can turn the other way around. Talk about the craving will make you suffer. So it's good to have a cessation of craving. And that's the means or way to reduce your craving to cessation for the cessation of craving. And when the craving comes, why is it? There's a basis. This means the object for the craving. So everybody can understand. The object, essential object, like we said yesterday, the karma. Essential object is karma, right? There's a like a sight, sound, smell, the body, five aggregates. So it's a, that's how we can talk about four noble truth without using the word suffering. Okay. Can you follow this idea? Doris, Chi, can it's, you answer? It's good. It's good, Sayaji. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, very clear. It's very clear. Yeah, very Thank clear. You. All right. Sayaji, yeah. So without talking about the suffering and suffering, 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 so because nobody wants to hear suffering or that. So you can talk about oh, we have craving and us. The craving happens because there's a basis for craving. And because when you have cessation of craving, that's mean that when we talk about nibbana, how do you describe nibbana? So we talk about nibbana as ultimate peace and happiness. Okay. So that's the idea of nibbana. And if you want to get it, you must have the way to the cessation of craving. Because craving means, in normal life, we talk about craving means defilement, mental defilements. So people be able to understand this statement. All right. So this paragraph in the actually is very important for us to see the Four Noble Truth in another way. I think it's actually, I read it before, it's very logic and very understand. Okay, now, order, okay. Why is the order? Why do we preach the four noble truth? Why is it we start with the first one? Why did we start with the second one? Like why don't we start with the nibbana? Okay, why? What's the order? Uh, somebody read twenty nine. Yeah. Uh, okay. But the call, can you read twenty nine? But the call, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, twenty nine. As to order, this two is only order of teaching. The truth of suffering is given first. See, it is easy to understand because of its crossness and because it is common to all living things. The truth of origin is given next to show is given next to show its cause. Then the truth of cessation to make it known that with the cessation of the cause, there is the cessation of the food. The truth of the path comes last. To show the means to achieve that. Okay. So do you understand about this, Brother Ko? Can you say it in an easy way according to your understanding? I think he's, he, mm -hmm. he's trying to say that the, the arrangement is actually very logical. Okay. Uh, because uh, by telling the truth, the, the, the truth of suffering, and once you understand that, then uh, from from the gross, because the truth of suffering from gross to, to to the more refined way, then uh, once you understand the truth, then the origin of the truth, the, which is the cause of the of the suffering, can be you know easily explained. Easy. Then similarly, uh, when the truth of cessation is is understood, then the path to the cessation is easily. Uh, uh, what do you call uh, understood and uh, and accept? Mm, okay, all right. How about the thirty? Okay, somebody read thirty. Yes. Uh, okay. Who is the person called having the iPhone name? Ah? iPhone. Who is iPhone? Who is the one having the name iPhone? iPhone. I think it's not a phone, right? It's somebody name. Can you read 30? Yeah. Who is this iPhone? Nobody. All right. Okay. So no no respect. Uh, okay. So Ngo Chu, Ngo Chu Yuan. Can you join us in reading? Ngo Chu Yuan. Okay. 
I think all these are new one. Okay. Then we go for uh Wong, Sister Wong. Yes, 30. Sister Wong, yeah. Uh okay. Mm. Or alternatively, he announced the truth of suffering first to install a sense of agency into living beings, caught up in the enjoyment of the pleasure of becoming. And next to that, the truth of origin is to make known that that suffering neither comes about of itself as something not made, nor is it due to creation by an overlord, etc. But that, on the contrary, it is due to this cause. After that, cessation to instill comfort by showing the escape to those who seek the escape from suffering with a sense of urgency because overwhelmed by suffering with its cause. And after that, the path that leads to cessation to enable them to attain cessation. This is how the exposition should be understood here as to order. Okay, thank you. So this is the order of the teaching. So you, you can, I mean, when you, now I'm doing the charge here, so later you can just add in yourself. So yeah, the order here. There are a few reasons here, the order of teaching. Okay, you can add in yourself. Try to understand the passage read just now, being uh, read just now, and then try to think about. Okay, 27, 28, try to fill in yourself here. Okay, so I just leave it for you all to do yourself. Okay, so it's interesting why we know the order. I think uh, the for me, the first one will be easy because suffering will be something that we can see in our life. Not the birth, but at least aging, sickness, death. You know, you can see it. So when you know, then you need to know what's the cause. The cause is craving, right? Then if you want to terminate the cause, then you go for the cessation. And the last one, you find the means means that the path toward the cessation but or if not you the buddha say why he want to install the sense of urgency for those who enjoy too much all right okay so there are two reasons given here 29 and 30 okay now this is talking about when we say in the first noble truth, we're talking about the birth and then and so on. So there's a reason why the Buddha say birth is suffering and so on. Yeah. So there's a certain order. Actually, when Buddha preach ending, there's always some certain order and there's certain reason here. So we read this one. Uh Shimin, you can try. Read the 31. No, can can 31, yes. Oh, okay. As to expounding birth and so on, the exposition should be understood here in accordance with the exposition of the things beginning with birth given by the Blessed One when describing the Four Noble Truths. That is to say, in 12 things in the description of suffering, Birth is suffering, aging is suffering, death is suffering, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair are suffering. Association with the unloved is suffering. Separation from the love is suffering. Not to get what one wants is suffering. In short, the five aggregate as object of clinging are suffering, the threefold craving in the description of origin, that craving which produces further becoming is accompanied by delight and greed, delighting in this and that, that is to say craving for sense desire, craving for becoming, craving for non-becoming, and Nibbana, which has one meaning only in the description of sensation, that which is the remainderless 
fading away and cessation of that same craving, giving it up, relinquishing it, letting it go, not relying on it. And the eight thing in the description of the path, what is the noble truth of the way leading to the cessation of suffering? It is this no, noble eightfold path that is to say, right view, right thinking, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. Okay, thank you. All right. So when the Buddha preached, he also described the this creation of suffering, you have this one. Right. So this one you find in the Vibhanga, Abhidhamma, the second text, Vibhanga, 92. Okay, so we go for the... Now, there's a phone number now we go detail, right? One by one. This one, suffering. Now, when we talk about suffering, why does the Buddha start with the birth first? Okay, then after that, he followed by aging. And there's a footnote on seven. Okay, so we look at the footnote here. Now, okay. Sickness is not included here, all right? Because there are some persons in whom sickness does not arise, like vulnerable Bakula. In fact, in Majima 124, he's uh, somebody ordained at the age of 80. He lived up to the age of 80, so totally 160 years, he never has suffering. Because he, his good karma, he offered medicine to the Buddhas, all right? So you can see here, you have birth, aging, but no sickness mentioned here. But it depends on the sutta. Some of the sutta has mentioned about birth. Some of the sutta, uh, some of the sutta mentioned about sickness. Some of the sutta did not mention about sickness. So it also depends. Okay. So actually, sometimes we can put extra thing here. So normally we have birth, aging. For human, definitely we've got sickness. But sickness does not take place for all the human. Even like Dewa, they do not have sickness. Okay. So that, and then, and from there you got the feeling, sorrow, lamentation, pain, and grief and despair. Right. A suffering. Then you got association with the unloved one, separation from the loved one, not getting what one's. One is suffering. So in short, the five aggregates as object, we call it the clinging, the pancha upadana kanda. The five aggregates of clinging are suffering. So how many you have? Birth, aging, sickness, optional, yeah, dead. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, okay? 11 or 12. How many? 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, 12. So if you're going to in include the sickness, you will got about 13. So now we will see all this as suffering. But no, most likely we don't see the birth because we cannot see the process of our own birth. And of course, before dying, maybe we will see the process of dying, but not on the actual dying. Okay. I think most of us will see the aging and sorrow, lamentation, this one. Pain normally refers to physical pain. Grief normally refers to the mental grief. So pain is physical pain. Grief refers to the mental grief. So in Bali will be Soka, Bari Dewa, Dukkha. So this one normally Dukkha, Domanasa. Okay. Dukkha refer to physical pain. Domanasa, grief, refer to mental pain. So we got both of them. And Upayasa is the despair. All right. So this is the way we should contemplate about suffering. And like we mentioned just now, so according to text, suffering should be understand, should be understood. Okay. And then the cause of origin of suffering, craving should be abandoned. And then the Nibbana should be realized. And then the effort path should be developed. That's one way we can see it. Or if you 
we can skip the word suffering, just focus on the craving, basis of craving, craving, cessation of craving, the means or way to the cessation of craving. Okay, that's how we do it. Right. So there are some texts I copy, which I think is important. So we go for beginning again. All right. So that's how we should see the Four Noble Truth. All right. And understand the meaning of Arya, Noble. Understand the meaning of Dukkha. Okay. Understand the meaning of Satya. So this means that the word Dukkha, Arya, Satya. We have to understand this. Okay, so I hope you all enjoy the today lesson. Okay. So how many still we mean now? All right. Okay, now if people ask you what is the main teaching of the Buddha, what is the main idea of Buddha teaching is a four noble truth, right? But you can say it, the main idea is actually talking about mental defilements and how to you get rid of mental defilements. Yeah, where yeah. the sunlight is strong here. <clears throat> Let me change this camera. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now, so besides talking about suffering and suffering, suffering, so we can think about from the eye, from the viewpoint of craving. So craving means defilement. So the Buddha talked about mental defilements, how to get rid of mental defilements for us to attain uh, ultimate peace and happiness. So that, that's another way we can see the Four Noble Truth without just stress on the word of suffering. All right. So I hope you can follow the lesson today. Any questions before I redo the sharing of merits? Okay. Yes, Wong. Sorry. Sun rain, bad for your eyes. <laughs> be careful with the sun rain, bad for the eyes. If it's too strong. <laughs> uh, this is normal. We are in second floor. So the, the it's just like the sun ray is happen to come in. So that's why I have to switch off, uh, close the windows. It's very normal. I mean, it's part of nature, so don't need to care. <laughs> so it's, it's part of aging and suffering and so on. All right. Okay. So if no questions, so uh, Doris, Sergi, call. I have, I have, yes. I have okay. okay. Yes. Sergi, will you? Yes. Uh, for the longest time when I read these four noble truths, on the first mm -hmm. noble truth especially, <laughs> It says about birth, death, aging, all these things. And then mm. one line, in short, the five aggregates of cleaning are suffering. So mm. I was thinking, if for a beginner, the birth, death, aging, all these things, there is no word aggregate. And then suddenly got the word five aggregates. Mm. How, it's quite difficult to match the five aggregates, that line, with the above, the different Yeah, types. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. When I start to learn about basic Buddhism, well, you know, we all are very traditional Buddhists are where we only, my house only got the Kuan Yin and we never heard about like five precepts, even though never heard about four noble truth, never heard about a four path. Then when I was working in Singapore, so I go and attend some of the Buddhist course. Then I heard about four noble truth. When the moment it talked about five aggregates, my mind is like totally blank, you know, because I don't even know what is five aggregates at that time. So, then you talk about okay, birth. I also don't understand why birth is suffering, but I know the aging sickness and this one I understand. So come to find a great, it's like a big gap of knowledge, right? So on something that we understand to something that we never heard about before, ultimate truth. So that's why this is the job of meditator to go and understand the five aggregates. Can you follow me? Yeah, Sergi. Okay, okay. Okay, so if you understand everything, then why do you need to practice <laughs> four noble truth? Because we don't understand. That's why we need to understand. That's why the first noble truth is you need to be to understand it. All right. Second noble truth, you need to abandon the craving. Third noble truth, you need to realize it. And the fourth one, you need to develop it. Okay. 
Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay, next question. Uh, I did. Yes, but the call. Yeah. So regarding the the question just now, because I tend to look at it another way because this is the in the first sermon itself, after the first sermon, uh Venerable Konyana uh attain Sutapan. So meaning to say these terms maybe kanda is actually quite common term during that period of time as well. It's just that in Abhidhamma probably we interpret it as the uh, Paramata from the Paramata. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. But it may be also in the uh, in the so-called the uh, conventional terms uh, where they understand that okay there is such a terms called aggregate. Because mm. there is no explanation about the aggregate in the Dhamma Chakra Pavatana. Yeah. yeah. Actually, there are few versions of Dhamma Chakra, so it also depends on which version you look at it, right? That's N56.11. Does it mention about five aggregates? No or yes? Panchu, the Panchu Panchu Kanda. Kanda. Uh, right, right. Yeah. So in this way, we can take it. The people at that time, they heard about this. But the point is, only Vipassana practice appear in a world when the Buddha appear. So like, for example, at that time, everybody practice Samatha. Even the uh, Gautama ascetic, his two teacher practice Samatha up to very high jhana, to the very, very high plan. So Samatha practice is available. So maybe it's definitely the Vipassana practice is not available. But maybe the terms for aggregate were there at that time. But nobody know how to practice. Only the Buddha come and teach the way how to practice. Because it's like you, it's like craving. At... Everybody know about craving, but nobody know how to eradicate the craving at that time, right? Yeah, the idea of craving, everybody understand it. But why is it nobody know? Because the practice we pass on practice is not there. Because at that time, everybody cling to the idea of atta. Okay, so it's difficult to get rid of atta. So without getting rid of Atta, how can they see the five aggregates? Because of Moha, delusion cover it. That's the reason. That's why the that's why the Buddha might say the five aggregates is object of clinging. The Pancho Upadana Kanda. Upadana means clinging. So not just five aggregates, they cling to the five aggregates. That's why it's the four noble truth. The first noble truth means five aggregates of clinging. Cling as Atta, as I am mine. And why is it there? Cannot say because of the delusion is there. Even at that time, the Kondanya, he only attend the Sotapana, you know. This is after that, the Buddha must preach all the way to Anatta Lakana Sutta. Okay? Oh, thank you. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah, all right. So we let uh, Doris call. Can you share your screen? And then she did the sharing of merits. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. yeah. Just to chant, is it, uh, Saiji? Yeah, yeah, you, you, you chant. Uh, I'm tired also. Okay. <laughs> tired already. Okay. <laughs> okay. Transference of merits to all celestial beings. Aka Sata Chabumata Deva Naga Mahitika Punyantang Anumoditwa Chiram Rakhan to Loka Sasanang Aka Sata Chabumata Deva Naga Mahitika Punyantang Anumoditwa Chiram Rakhan to Dhamma De Sanang Aka Sata Chabumata Deva Naga Mahitika Unyantang Anumoditwa Chiram Rakhan to Mamparang Transference of Merits to all Deva Spirits and Beings Etabata Cha Amhehi Sambatang Punya Sampadang Sabbe Deva Anumodantu Sabba Sampati Siddhiya Ethavata cha amhehi Sambatang punya sampadang Sabbe putha anumodantu 
sappasampatti siddhiya ethavatha cha amhehi sampadang punya sampadang sappe sattha anumodantu sappasampatti siddhiya to all departed ones idang me nya tinang hotu sukitha hontu nya tayo idang me nya tinang hotu Sukita hontunya tayo, idang minya tinang hotu, sukita hontunya tayo. Aspiration. Imina punya kame na, mame bala sama gamo, satang sama gamo hotu, ya wanit bana patia, sadu sadu sadu. Okay, thank you very much. And we put a hand and say Buddha Sasana Chiram Ditatu. Okay. Buddha Sasana Chiram Ditatu. Buddha Sasana Chiram Ditatu. Buddha Sasana Chiram Ditatu. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Okay, so before we finish, so you can see the value of learning from this Vishwimaga. You get lots of points, you know, because this commentary is written at about 5th or 6th century by the monk called Buddha Gosa. And he get this from the commentary of existed many hundred years before that. Yeah, he said that it's the corrected by the uh, Venerable Mahinda who go to Sri Lanka, you know. So all these are exist for hundreds or maybe 1,000 years ago. So you can see the information they are very packed and very helpful for us, you know. Because if not, when you read the sutta, you will find, all oh, this sutta talk about something, that sutta talk about something. So the Visumaga is actually, is a commentary book. They get in a lot of information from many, many different suttas and they explain more. So when you read it, you also find that it's really tally with the Theravada Buddhism. So it's actually interesting. So it's something that really helpful for you. So that's why I said Abhidhamma is something you learn the facts. Wisimaga is something that you learn how to practice it. 